Okay, let's do a little summon. A lot of you probably did last did summation notation sometime in high school. That might have been a while ago, and you might be a little bit rusty. We use summation notation quite a bit in statistics and econometrics, so it pays to take a look at it again and make sure you're comfortable with what's going on there. And my motto for this is going to be, when in doubt, write it out. If it's not clear what that summation means, then write it out in, in long form and see what's going on. Well, how do we define the summation notation? It's just a string of things that are added together, and uh, in this case, let's start with x1 plus x2 plus x3. That's a simple sum of three numbers. Those numbers could be anything. In statistics, very often, they're observations in a sample, so it might be person 1 and person 2 and person 3, and we're adding up, say, their income to get the average. Well, in summation notation, we have a shorthand for this, and we're going to use the large Greek symbol sigma, and sigma from i equals 1 up to 3. We have three individuals, and then we put the xi, x sub i, over here. So you can see the logic of this. x1 plus x2 plus x3 is the sum from i going from 1 to 3, 1 to 3, of the xi's. So just adding them up. Obviously, this can be generalized to n observations or numbers in the string, so it's i equals 1 to n of xi. And it's as simple as that. Common application, of course, is uh, we add up all kinds of things in statistics. The sample mean x bar is simply 1 over n times the adding up, the sum of the numbers, so it's the arithmetic average. And that we can see is easily shown in summation notation as 1 over n times the sum of the x's, i equals 1 to n. And uh, so that's about all there is to it. There are some rules to keep in mind about sums. So uh, there's certain things you can do and certain things you can't do. So uh, one thing to note is if you have a constant like some number a, say 4, and we add it up over n different observations of 4, then we're going to get a plus a plus a, 4 plus 4 plus 4, n times, right? So that's going to end up being n times a. So you need to make note of what is the n up there at the top. That's how many there are. And we add up that many a's, and we have n times a. Simple rule. Now, the distributive rule uh, applies. So if you have... Under the sum here, we have a times xi, and a is a constant. We can factor that a out and bring it out here. And again, if you were to write this out, you'd have a long string of a times x1 plus a times x2 plus a times x3, and you could factor all those a's out because it's just a constant number, a parameter. And so we end up with this a times the sum of the x's. Now, uh, that can lead you astray. Uh, you, if you look at this one here, we have the sum of x i y i. It might have helped, and uh, you know you should always do this if it makes it less ambiguous. Both of those things are within the summation. So we're adding x one y one plus x two y two plus x three y three etc. That does not turn out to be equal to x i times the sum of the y i's. In other words, we couldn't take, can't do that, pull the xi out. Why is that? Because that xi differs for every single value of i, potentially, right? It might be 4 for one person and 10 for another person. It's not a constant like a that's being factored out. And so you can't factor it unless you know it's a constant. And then it wouldn't have the subscript i. The subscript i is what tells you, right there, that it is uh, something that has to stay under the sum. Important point. So, a couple of things, uh, related points, beware, common mistakes that people can make in, when they're doing this. Uh, if you multiply two sums, sum of xi times the sum of yi, that is not equal to the sum of the xi yi. It really follows from the previous point. Let's do a simple example and just see why it doesn't work. Here's uh, just two sums of just two numbers each. So we have the sum from i equals 1 to 2 of xi, so that's going to be x1 plus x2. 
And this one here is the sum uh, of the yi over 2. So that's y1 plus y2. Now multiply those together over here. We got x1 plus x2 times quantity y1 times y2, plus y2, excuse me. And uh, as you know, you have to do all the possible combinations, right? So we have x1 times y1, x1 times y2, we have x2 times y1, and we have x2 times y2. So we have four terms in there. And that's obviously not the same thing as this, right? Which would have been... Uh, the sum of xi, yi. So, uh, simple point here, those two things are not equal to each other. You've got all those cross products in there that makes it different. And it's a common mistake people make uh, when they're not used to using these things to uh, forget about those cross products. Notice here in the bottom, when I wrote this, I dropped the i equals 1 to 2 in the uh, summation sign there. And if it's unambiguous, uh, we often make a shortcut so we don't have to draw it right in all those i equals 1 to 2 or to n uh, if it's unambiguous. But if it's not so clear, it never hurts to put those in there, those limits, like we have in here, for example. Okay, last point about this uh, common errors is uh, works for ratios also. Namely, you cannot say that the ratio of the sum of the y's to the sum of the x's uh, is equal to the sum of the ratio itself. So that does not hold. So don't make that mistake. We see a lot of things like this in statistics where we have, uh, for example, in regressions, we have that there's a sum of uh, the product, uh, you know, x minus x bar, y minus y bar, over the sum of xi minus x bar squared. That's the uh, regression coefficient, beta hat, and ordinarily squares for a simple regression. And uh, we can't uh, just sort of put all those things under the sum. It's a sum of one thing over a sum of another. All right, last point I want to make is uh, double sums. So in a number of applications, you might end up with a couple of things, summations, uh, to capture a string of numbers being added together. So here would be an example. Suppose the variable x i t, x sub i t, is the income of individual i during some period of time. Let's call it during a year t. So we might have uh, Bob's income during 1985, or Mary's income in 1991. And i goes from 1 up to n, and little t goes from 1 up to big T. So that would be some period of years, say, from 1985 to 2015, something like that. Big T would be 2015 in that case. So the total income, if we wanted to get the total income of all n people over all big T years, uh, then we would be adding up uh, x11, plus x12, plus x13, and so forth, up to x1 cap t. Then we'd have x21 for individual 2, plus their income in period 2, all the way up to x2 big T. And we keep going through all the individuals, 3, 4, 5, all the way up through individual n, right? Now, if you look at that, you can see that what's going on is that we've got individual i, uh, sorry, individual 1, for all t periods. So we're adding up over all the years from little t equals 1 up to big T for individual 1. Then we do the same thing for individual 2. So we're kind of breaking this into chunks. For each individual we add up over all the years. And then of course we can add those up over all the individuals and in the end we end up with this expression at the bottom kind of squeezed in here. And that's a double sum. In other words, we have the sum from i equals 1 to n individuals and the sum from t equals 1 to big T time periods of the xit. And if you expanded that, you'd see that you're ending up with how many things being added together. Well, we have n individuals times big T uh, uh, year observations. So whatever that is, if we had a 1,000 individuals over 
20 years, we'd have 20,000 things being added up in this double sum. And uh, that can be a, a handy, obviously, you'd never want to write out all those things being added up together. So the summation notation makes for a very handy shortcut.